Nothing spices up your Pokemon ROM hack better than having lots of custom overworld sprites. In this video, we're going to be going over how to edit and insert overworld sprites using Hex Maniac Advance, the best all-in-one binary hacking program for making Pokemon ROM hacks. Let's get to it! I'll be covering a few main objectives in this tutorial. We'll start off with basic knowledge and info about overworld sprites. Next, we'll go over the limitations to overworld sprites, which is what you can and can't do because of the game engine and GBA hardware. And finally, we'll have what I think is the easiest way to insert new sprites in the ROM hack. Time to start with the basics. From the home screen of Hex Maniac Advance, we can navigate to overworld sprites by pressing graphics, then overworld, and then sprites. One quick thing to note about sprites if you're not familiar. The game stores sprites and color palettes separately, and lots of overworld sprites in the game share the same palette, so changing a color on one character may impact hundreds of others, so be careful. Remember to make regular backups of your ROM hack. Here's the entire list of sprites, starting with sprite number 0, which is the male player character here. I'm using Pokemon Emerald right now, so we have Brendan. In this table here to the left, it looks like a lot of info that may be kind of confusing, but don't worry. With the easy way I'm going to show you with editing sprites, we won't have to worry about a lot of this. There are a few main things that we have here that are important to pay attention to. First, we have the palette ID, which is the palette assigned to this sprite. The second is the distribution, size draw, and animation, which pretty much associates with how the sprite renders in the game and how the animations work. For example, the player character here will be different from most NPCs because only the player has a running animation, while most NPCs only have a walking animation. What's also important to know is there's lots of NPCs that have no walking animation, especially gym leaders and Elite Four members who stand still the whole game. Now this data section on the left expands on this data a little further, and the most important thing to pay attention here is the PAL slot. Due to hardware limitations of the Game Boy Advance, there can only be 16 sprite palettes loaded at a single time, and by default, the PAL slots are assigned to NPCs that share palettes. The player character is always slot 0. Most NPCs use PAL slots 1 through 5. The dynamic overworld palette is slot 10, which is the best one to use a custom palette with because it won't interfere with others. 10 is the highest PAL slot by default, but with a built-in Hex Maniac Advanced script you can get from Utilities, lets you expand this PAL slot to 15, which lets you use all 16 palette slots the GBA is capable of that I mentioned earlier. You can use PAL slots 11 through 15 after applying this script, but know that other things in the game use these slots, such as the Pokemon Summary Screen, item bag sprites, and more. I would try to avoid 11 through 15 if possible, unless you have a sprite appear in some kind of cutscene who enters and leaves before you can open the party menu. Also, saving in front of a sprite with PAL slots 11 through 15 can glitch its palettes when restarting the game. Here's a quick tip. In the MGBA emulator, you can go to Tools, Game State Views, and View Palette, and you'll see a live interface that displays the 16 PAL slots. Remember, these PAL slots are all dealing with the physical limitations of GBA hardware. If you're hacking Fire Red with the complete Fire Red upgrade applied from the utilities, you really don't need to worry about PAL slots as much because there's changes made to the overworld engine that lets NPCs dynamically swap their PAL slots. If you don't know what the complete Fire Red upgrade is, it adds all Pokemon generations 1 through 8, the fairy type, physical special split, Mega Evolutions, and lots of other quality of life updates from the newer Pokemon games, so I highly recommend using it if you're hacking Fire Red. Speaking of limitations to the PAL slots, we'll now quickly go over the limitations to adding sprites to the ROM hack. You can see at the top here there's an add button. By default, the max amount of sprites you can have in the game without breaking any other game data is 240. As you can see here in Emerald, the last sprite is number 238. Using another built-in HMA script from the utilities, there is a script that lets you expand this number to 255, but unfortunately, we can't go beyond that with binary hacking, meaning you'll have to replace some existing sprites. Now that we've gone over most of the sprite info and limitations to the overworld sprites, let's now dive into the easiest ways I edit and insert custom sprites. Like I mentioned earlier, lots of sprites in the game share the same palette, so if you change the colors in Hexmanic Advance built-in image editor, you may initially mess up a lot of other sprites in the game. This means we have to create some new palettes first. To add new palettes, we have to navigate to the top left here, click this middle arrow, and press palettes. Here's our list of palettes in the ROM. To add your own, simply click the last item on the list and press the Add One New button. Pressing this may repoint all the palette data within the game, as Hexmanic Advance has an auto pointer feature. But don't worry, that's a good thing because it won't mess with other data in the game. 
Now with our newly added palette, we have to immediately press repoint, as it initially just copies the data from the last palette on the list. You can see here the offset number has now changed. After this, we want to change the ID number so the game knows what palette to assign the sprite to. We can do that here on the left, and I just add one number above what was already there previously. Note that this ID number is in hexadecimal, so after number 9 comes A through F. Now that we have our new palette made, I'm not going to change the colors because I'll be inserting a sprite that already has new colors, and Hexmaniac Advance will update that for me. Now I'm going to be inserting this custom Professor Oak sprite into Emerald, made by a good friend of mine, Cesar C. Base, who has been helping me make tons of awesome new sprites for my Pokemon ROM hack, Emerald Mini. Really quick, if you want to easily work on a custom sprite with a different program, you can export the image right here from Hexmaniac Advance, and if you press all pages, you get an entire sheet with all the NPCs animations all in one, and I think that's the easiest way to edit the sprites. Make sure you export the sprites with the dimensions you want, which is usually 16x16, 16 16x32, 16 or 32x32. 32 32. You can also find lots of sprite sheets online shared by the community to insert. Now that I have my Professor Oak sprite I want to insert, I'm going to find another sprite that has the same dimensions and walking animation. This guy right here will work fine. Now the easiest way to do this in my opinion is copy this entire table on the left. Then find a sprite you want to kill and replace the new sprite with. I'm going to choose this Vigoroth sprite. Now I'm going to highlight that whole table and paste the table data from the other guy. We're going to press repoint and then hit data and repoint all these individual sprites. Doing this will ensure the original sprite doesn't get messed up. Now back at the table, we're going to change the palette ID to the new one we created. I had ID 1124 here. Now it's going to look a little messed up at first, but we'll hit import. I'll select my custom oak sprite. Now we have a few options here. Smart will change the colors to match an existing palette, which is not what we want to do. Greedy will force our custom sprite to keep its correct colors, which is what we'll be doing since we have an all new sprite. If this number under Greedy is well over 100, that means you didn't change your palette ID, and this will actually break lots of other sprites in the game. Cautious here doesn't change the palette ID, nor its colors, but since I'm using custom colors, I'll press Greedy. Now I can scroll through the different animated sprites for Oak, and they look good to me. Since I have my custom sprite, I want to make sure the PAL slot is 10, so it won't interfere with other NPCs in the map. Now I'll throw this NPC in my map editor here and test it in the game. Looks great to me. If you're adding an overworld sprite such as a custom legendary Pokemon, a lot of them are in the 32x32 32 32 size, so when you copy sprite data to replace another, make sure you're copying the one with the same dimensions. That's it for this overworld sprite tutorial for Hex Maniac Advance. There's lots of extra details about overworld sprites I left out, but this should be enough for you guys to be able to easily work on your own sprites. Please drop a like on the video if you learned something today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below because I know a lot of people from the Hex Maniac Advance community who will be able to help you. And trust me, a lot of them are much smarter about this than I am. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.